architecture design talk or what we call it uh, now as a ed plus uh, if you are new here the architecture design and talk series is a design talk event organized by the department of architecture faculty of the environment UMass. so this event is a renewed approach to our previous design lecture uh, which have been conducted from time to time from uh, for the, the last past semesters so and now our speaker for today is Mervin, Mr. Mervin Wong. So he'll be talking about uh, the topic of a secret recipe, model making and manual drawing skills. So uh, in architecture, drawing is a significant part of the whole design and construction process. Uh, model making and manual drawing is widely applied, especially during the inception stage. So today we want to hear more about that. And in an overview, of how to prepare models and manual drawings. So before that, let me introduce to you our speaker for today. Uh, he's, here, here are some backgrounds. Uh, Mervin, Mr. Mervin uh, recently joined Unima this month. Uh, he is a double degree holder in Bachelor of Science in Housing, Building and Planning and Bachelor of Architecture from University of Science Malaysia, USM. Uh, his professional experience in, in architecture has been mostly developed at local award-winning firm Design Network Architects, or is known as DNA, and an established firm in Kuala Lumpur, Asima Architects. So throughout the nine years of working, uh, the many architectural projects that he has undertaken have equipped him with the skills and knowledge needed on design, working drawings, as well as contract documentation and implementation. So, so for, for the students, uh, here are some uh, advice. Uh, please prepare your questions. By the end of the talk, we will be opening uh, this session for Q&A. Without further ado, let's welcome our speaker, uh, Mr. Mervin. Are you ready? Hi. Uh, good morning, everyone. Right. Um, there is a one. Um, the, the sound, the attendance keep blinking. Uh, any any chance that I can mute the, the, the blinking? I'm not sure there is any uh, sound interruption that Check. I mean, appear the the attendance. Can, can mute that one, or, or, or just leave it. We okay. couldn't hear those sound from our end here. I oh, okay. The system, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then it's okay. Then I'll uh then I'll start my presentation for this morning. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. So today's actually the talk will be. Um, actually, is requested by Prof. Atma. So one day he said, mentioned that our because this COVID lockdown for is very tricky for the first year student. They have not met any lecturer. They have not met any seniors. So they may be um, lost in presentation or in, in terms of how to present, uh, do a presentation on uh, on the board, the drawing board, and also uh, for as as you know that our Minima students also are new back only three years of uh, uh, history background, so they may have not enough reference uh, to do the presentation board either manual or computer. So we are asking us like uh, Dr. Apa, uh, Donna and me to do a quick presentation uh, on how to do a presentation board. So at first I was like, um, maybe I should share on my third year and final year, fifth year. <laughs> Sorry? Uh, to do the research on how to start a project from the beginning until the end. But this Prof. Amma said, or oh, maybe not, maybe you should share on how to do a model and how to do uh, manual skills. I said, why? Because uh, he said his blood pressure is still rising up. I said, well, how come? So uh, after that submission, I saw the submission on uh, presentation on second year, then I understand why he, 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 she mentioned like that. Uh. So actually, I realized that they are all confused with among uh, all the lecturer we have reviewed your second year project. We have shown that the presentation skill of manual and presentation skill with contract documentation drawing, actually, we all have mixed up. We all put documentation drawing like specification, dimension drawing, all inside the presentations inside the studio inside the studio presentation. So today I just want to share a quick series of presentation drawing from different people, not just mine, because just mine alone will maybe 
uh, will not be enough or maybe not good enough. So I collected a few series of uh, good um, reference for you all today. So I will start with my uh, reference on the first year. So in first year, this is what the standard that in US and during my time, first semester, the student they're able to do. So actually our standard of uh, first year standard, if we start with bubble diagram and drawing, manual drawing, but suddenly in a while for the submission, we saw this one submission that really shocked us. So we see that this is only the first year, first semester student work that we can see the kind of uh, rendering skill and this manual uh, manual skill that they have. Actually, we they have rendered the skill with um, texture in plan, in side plan, and they have different language and inside the presentation. So we were saying, how come this candidate is so good? And then we realized that when we zoom into the submission board with them here, he's actually an uncle of about 50, 40 years old. He's, uh, he's coming to GSM to further his study after being a partner for more than 30 years now. So this is the kind of uh, skill that he has. So we were amazed by the kind of drawing that he was able to draw with uh, first year standard. Of course, he's cannot compare to our first So the second one is, the, is, is uh, this is a series of first year of Chi Hao's drawing. I will talk about a lot on this uh, Chi Hao because he's my senior. And secondly, he has the art background before he entered to USM. So those who have art background, you will be benefits from first year. Because first year, immediately you go into architecture. There's no, um, there's no time for you to learn how to draw or how to color manual or do modeling. So Ji Hao has um, um, experiences, I mean, art background during, during the secondary school time. So he do a lot of series that good model in his work. So this, this, this model work is purely by using um, ice cream stick. If you're a first year student that you have difficulties in sourcing materials, so ice cream stick will be a good choice to do a model, uh, to do a model, physical model. And then you can see from this picture, the kind of skill that Jiha has, he's able to craft, from the right hand side, he's able to craft out the statue by using pen. So he's, the person who can, I mean, to have art background, we have the kind of skill to do that with uh, such a, such a, uh, I mean, a halus um, technique. So this is his, some of his artwork. He's using basa wood. Uh, basa wood is one of the very good material in using model, especially uh, the wood is, is soft and then it's easy to cut. So you can able to cut it and then you can able to, uh, to, 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 to work with stuff, to, Cut whatever, cut whatever you shape you want, and then you mix with uh, ice cream stick, and you're able to find the right uh, material for, for your learning works. So in second year, uh, this also G house work. So I want to you to observe the kind of material that he used. He introduced a lot of very class material. If you observe carefully on the right hand side on the modeling board, he used a lot of this transparent thing. It's called perspective. So perspect is the material that gives you the kind of uh, um, the, the class, the very expensive look of your model. And then you click and he mix a lot of pasta wood. The wood color is all pasta wood. And then he mix with this um, uh, ice cream stick and then to form uh, his modeling, his model. So this curved thing, transparent thing that turns around is all perspect. Later on, I will teach you the, the methods and the, how to do this curve thing to form this curve thing by using perspective. And then you observe this, this project is called the Indo Aquarium. How he form the water, symbolize the water. He do the sim, symbolic material, uh, I mean, uh, symbolic material to, to, to represent water. So in this underneath side of this model is actually the forest firing uh, that we use on the green back of cushion, the white color. And then he goes use a piece of perspex over it, so the model look more expensive. And then he give the representation of um, water. So this is one of this model that he built. So this is the kind of model he built. So this is my second year project. Uh, a little bit of background on my second year project. So the lecturer is given us a task to do a portable fios. 
by this motor bus must be able to mobilize and immobilize by maybe two percent. So this is how the kiosk look like. Then my concept of design when I sketch this thing, I was smart to intend to do something that very tough. So I do come up with the concept of who it can. So it captures people, I mean uh, some tourists come and some people attend the convocation, you track the people and then they, they kind of track this thing and then they, they can't come up the kind of concept. So so my hand itchy la, so just draw her thing and and draw something that free form. So when I want to start to do my model, oh gosh, I got a problem to source the material. So one day, so happens that I saw Ji Hao. Ji Hao is, is staying together with my, my unit of, uh, uh, I mean, the same block of apartment. So I bumped into him. So I asked him to come out uh, with me and uh, showing my, my sketches to him. And hey, Ji Hao, how to do this model? Eh? How, to, how to find the material that can curve? He said, why not? You go and look for prospect. Huh? So prospect is able to do the curve thing. So he showed me how to twist it, how to, how to, how to cut it. You assume what material and ask me to find, you go and find Josh Town, go to Josh Town, and you go and look around the whole street and you'll be able to find the first pack. So the next day I went to the Josh Town and I feel fine, go around a few shops and then I find uh, to source for first pack. So for your understanding, first pack comes with a dif dif different type of thickness. They come with 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5. So if you do model, make sure that you find the thinner the better. So for you easier to cut. But unfortunately for my project, I'm not able to find the thin part it's all out of stock. So I buy the 0 0.3 or 0 0.4. So end up uh it's very difficult to cut out. So this is the outlook. Uh this is what I escape. So it's a curved chair and then it's able to disable and dis I mean assemble and dis dismantle. So I come up with this model at the end of the day. So uh, maybe you just observe the detail because I'm going to share a small detail how to make this thing uh, and the tools to make, make this model. So this purely, the black color is purely prospect. Then this transparent thing is mixture of prospect and also this uh, transparent uh, sheet is like plastic that we, we always use for this uh, book cover. And then how to turn this prospect to twist it around. I'm going to show you later on. So this is how you bend it. Okay, so this is the form thing. Uh, I create the design to have a natural ventilation, which means all this global transparent thing is able to uh, move up and down. It's like served by a louver. Mm -hmm. And then it's able to dismantle. Sorry, uh, okay. So able to dismantle. So how this is how it looks like when the model is dismantled. It's purely 100% respect and to form to share, I will let you know how it on. So to after uh, of this model, so we have uh, I took my the video to show the the photo shooting how I sh I, I, I form up the background. I use a cardboard to form a tree of the model and then take the picture of this uh, box. So the secret recipe of prospect uh, uh, maybe someone is speaking. Okay, to do a prospect model, the tools that you need is a prospect cutter. Then you need the rubs. Why after you cut the prospect, you need to uh, smooth the surface of the prospect to make it 90 degree or you need to after you bend it, you need to sharp it the edges and then you need to send the to send the shape to send it smoothly. And then how to glue the pers perspective model you need to buy a core form. So perspect come with different kind of thickness, but to do it, it's not easy to find a core form in the market because it's uh, actually illegal. So what you can do is that you can borrow from someone is inside the lab, for example. Uh, medical lab, you can solve it in medical lab. The second you can solve it in bio lab. So I was able to get it from a friend from bio lab to get a proper um, chloroform. And then you have to, to do this. Secondly, to store chloroform is also need to special, I mean, you cannot just put it inside a metal case or inside a plastic case. The thing will 
will evaporate. So you have to put in the glass cap and then a glass bottle. So how this is how you uh, stick the two material, two plastic together, is using the floor form. So to form, how to form the curve shape of this uh, aspect? Okay, this is the special skill that you need, the special tools. You need a gas stove. So to once you put the model in perspective on top of this fire, you actually you can form it the kind of shape that you want and quickly you dip into a pail of water to freeze the shape that you want. So once you freeze it or you form it and then you quickly dip inside the water and then you think it's not nice again, you take it out and then you put on the fire again and then you shape it and then you put in the water again. So this is how you come out with a curved shape or the curved um, uh, the, the thing of uh, the, the shape that you want. So this is how so this is how I mean the do stand up this is maybe a good choice. So at the end of the day, then you still need a special tools to assemble all together. So you need to buy a drill. So this drill is has been with me since second year until fifth year in high school. So you do this drill to drill all the screws together and then fall together. So some people may think that it's crazy to do a model, you buy all the screws, you need fire, you do drill, and then and but if you drill more modern maker that they have all these kind of tools to do a little bit more. So so spend some money or invest a little bit on buying this drill or buy uh buy 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 buy, buy prospect. So I always keep prospect stock in my in my, in, my, in, my, in my house actually, in, in case I need to do for, for, for the rest of the world. I'll show you later on more models at the back by using all this material. So the second project in second year, uh, we have suddenly, we came in, all our batch the level, the skill and level is almost, almost the same level. Until my second year, this person comes in. So I'll share a lot of uh, this person name for Asli. Asli, when he came into our batch, he's like, we are just about 21 years old, 22 years old. But Asli is about 28, 29 when he comes into our class. So he's been studying, uh, working for maybe six or seven years uh, outside in the industry. And then he joined us because he, uh, he managed to, to interview and get through and come into our class. So this Asli always has this kind of speed that nobody has, especially in second year. So every time during my first week or first week or first week of the presentation, the moment that we show butter paper in, Ali is able to show all the top. Four more, four A1, four H uh four A2, he's able to finish completely with a full final work. So I'm gonna show you some series of Asli and Homework. And his work is uh, very impressive. And then we always uh, refer to his work and we always try to Try to try to learn from him. So actually, this uh, this is the kind of uh, rendering that he used for Monocon. Yeah, if you can see, he rendered all the things that um, I, I like what Asli did for the presentation of design process. If you can observe from the top part, how he managed to form the design process with uh, the sketches of RPs, how he bring all the storyboard uh, into the design. So the top part is how the floor will come in to, to present uh, the, the, the design development and process and how we form this whole plan. And he managed to be a very good in rendering um, graphics, the, the, the kind of title block that he do and he sent uh, in the rendering of the other trees. So this is the artwork uh, during, during university time. So these are some of the numbers of his, his artwork. So, so uh, this is the, so, so one of the ASLI I'm going to share is the media that we use. Uh, ASLI produced marker in his uh, in his design, and then you can see the, the kind of storyboard that he sketch. So when you present your idea from the sketches to your final design, you can actually put your design process on the top and how it flows into your design, and then you can present it during the presentation time. And then on the, my right hand side. You can see his combination of uh, color pencil, marker, and then one, uh, one attractive media that they use is actually chalk. 
kapo. Dia pakai kapo kuning biru untuk just color the sky and the trees. So this is the media and what even water. So we can this is the, the media that you use. Uh. So it's some reference for you to do. Uh, you can you can you can you can refer to this uh, is uh, using the top. So we are able to render with a very good texture. The presentation always come with especially, especially more uh, manual rendering. Texture is very very important to 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 represent the graphic. So this is a perspective that you draw and with a very nice attack and all that. And all. This is only second year standard in my batch. So this ASP always give me give us all of us a very big headache because it's always do far more advanced than what we do, what we have done. So this is also his second year work. Um, it's very impressive. The brief is only give us the lecture only give us. Uh, you need to do three or four uh, A one board. So this is what Asli did. You see, he, he how he compiled the storyboard around his board. He do the uh, the, the idea bubble by diagram. How he transfer the diagram by diagram into a form into a space. And then if you are not good in your handwriting, you can use a template, writing template to write the handwriting and the, how you render the plan with furniture and with texture inside the inside all this plan. So this is a very good reference on if not everyone can, can do that, that kind of graphic graphic design, but then this is one good example, a very nice graphic uh, rendering. So this really kept a very eye-catching kind of thing. So one creative things that Asli did is the elevation and uh, the he, he draw the elevation? How he draw elevation? He combined the model and mo model and hand rendering into the elevation. So you can see this this elevation is actually is three D. So he just cut out the model board and then it stick into the elevation. This is really the wow effect. So everyone's like wow. We never want, but no one has thought of and literally you can combine the elevation actually just by sticking the 3D uh, I mean just the cardboard over the 3D that this kind of 3D effect and then you just render a little bit of shadows and the, the, the drawings pop up. So this is one of the way to do a, a, a presentation uh, uh, drawings on your on your on your on your board. Okay, so this is how uh, the second year goes. Um, so in third year, actually, the in third year in USM, we are asked to do um, first project. We are all asked to do manual, so no one can use computer and no one can use uh, computer rendering. So everyone are forced to do manual. So who are good in manual can benefit from it. So this is the, the the first project that I did. So actually, the, the lecture brief is only given like you have to do six and one. Okay, so but how come I end up doing like 10 and 1 in the end? So I will tell you the story. Okay, one day when we just started third year, so it's the first week of, I mean the first project, right? so we are very happy and then we, we just go to the school and then the lecturer give us the, the project. The project is Bali, so we all went to Bali and do our site visiting and come back. The first week the lecturer asks us, okay, bring up you know, your uh, bubble diagram, bring up and bring all your site analysis, bring up your design. So this ASLI, so we just bring a few bubble paper and try to present. But this ASLI come, come out. I'm just wondering, what is this guy doing? What is this guy carrying a, 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 a row of cloth? I mean, a row of kain. What is this guy doing? We are, we are just asking us to do presentation. We bring up one, one whole row of carpet. What are you guys going to do? I is going to decorate his room or what? So everyone like was, was shocked and then he lecture us hey, who wants to present? So this Azli come out and he just book up the whole kain and then he just drop it on the floor. So everyone's presentation is actually pinned up on the board, but then Azli has finished all the drawing within like one 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 week plus. He has finished almost uh, maybe 40, 30, 50 percent in a carpet format. So I'll let you see the format later on. I managed to get from him the other day. So end up, this is the, the, the presentation of my, my work. And this is Asli work. 
So this actually giving the first way he already bring this whole that this whole piece of cloth, he draw it on a piece of cloth. It's actually not a paper. So we were like, oh man, how am I going to how am I going to pass my 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 my, my studio with just a few pieces of butter paper? And this guy already has finished everything. So this Asli, I purposely put the big space on it because his, his work is really amazing. He's he's um he's uh, like uh, our abang inside the studio and everything that we know long, we just we just ask him, he take care of all of us, he just a uh, uh, good brother to all the studio mates. So everything is really know long we someone that we can refer to. So this Asli work and then this is the kind of uh, the media that we do. Uh, at the end of the day, he, he, he's the one that pushed all our studio to be better. So because of Asli, I worked seven times or eight times harder because of this guy. Okay. So this is my work in the final presentation board. So I will let you, for this project, I will tell you what is the media or the skill to compile a manual work. So if you are not good at direct uh, complete your menu inside one piece of paper. Actually, there's a tool we call it white print, a skill we call white print. What is white print? Okay, white print. Um, let me go through maybe the, the board organization. So, the board will always start with a, a step plan, and then the reason why the benefits of doing a, such a big scale of plan is because the four plan is all inside the side plan, so we don't have to redraw, redraw the smaller plan. So this in this method we can save a lot of time that uh the plan is actually drawn in the side to side plan. Although we have although we, we, we may end up a uh, very big um uh presentation board, but then it's in the other way, the good point is it speed up our it speed up our, our our delivery time because we don't have to redraw the plan and then it's all visible from the big piece of uh presentation board. So this is why we draw it in a big scale. And then all the drawings, manual drawing or other skill, you have to have a killer shot. Killer shot means in the perspective that you draw is eye-catching and people will be stunning inside uh the people will be stunned by the perspective. So presentation drawing doesn't mean that you have to put all the dimension inside the work. You just need to you just need to show uh, a graphic and then with a scale or scale bar. So don't mix up, don't don't put specification, don't put uh, a lot of complex dimension inside. The knowing we can read from the scale bar or scale it, uh, I mean the scale from uh, from 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 the board. So this is the sum of the board that I bought the, the perspectives of so the plan the section and also uh, the watercolor. So and then the section I will maybe share a bit on the watercolor. Uh, how, how how to be fast in watercolor. So to draw a 10 A1, this is only a maybe six week project to come out with uh, from design until the end of the about six week one semester, yeah, about six week project. So this is what I mean. You need to be have a big perspective that makes you think it's a killer shot that everyone will be attracted attracted by by the perspective. So these are the other one, these are my another third year project mine is uh, urban design. So this this picture I will tell you roughly to show you on the side plan how to render on the side plan. You need to have a different kind of tone in your roof to, to, to show the shadow and you can catch it darker at the shadow line so that you need to draw it up there. And then secondly you need to have a texture on the floor to show the tiles or the kind of material, the floor, is it a stone? This actually this indirectly will give a sense of um, uh, um, a, a pretty picture and a pretty, um, very nice uh, texture on your on your coloring on your presentation. So these are the end of the board. These are the the, the, the board how it looks like, and then you I compile it. So these are some of the perspective that uh, that, that I drawn. So it's all purely the color. Yeah. So this is another guy. Um, this media is. A um, mixture of watercolor and and also um, marker. So this is Jeta's work, uh, another junior of mine. So he's a very good student. He's a scholarship student, and he's he's every almost every semester he got the dean list in the exam. So he's very good in study and he's 
civil work. So he's the he's only surprised when he didn't get the visa, this fella. So this is his work. He's using manual and also uh marker. So this is how he combined uh, the, the the drawings and it's very good. Actually, especially when you draw in manual, the shadow is very important to give you a certain depth of the presentation. So all this you see the the, the you see the depth of the 3D actually by doing up the shadows. So when you cut a section, so it's very difficult if you don't indicate which area that you cut through. So normally in our school, we will color a very plain yellow color or orange color over the section that you cut. So the place that you didn't cut, you just show it, you just color uh, as usual. But the, the, the section that you cut through, you just color it white color or orange color so that when you blow up your section, be able to see, oh, actually this is the area that you have cut through the section. So it's easier to read in that, in that sense. So this is his, uh, some of this work by using um, uh, color pen, I mean, uh, marker. Yep. Okay. The second things I want to review is how to be fast in what are the skills you need to endure to produce a manual drawing. Okay, this is the method we call white green. What is white green? Because during your quick session, your lecturer or your clients may keep on changing the the, the correct maybe I'm not really the word, they, they may correct your design and correct your uh, your your uh your representation. So once you draw up the real plan, whatever lecturer comment right, you just repeat over the bottle paper. So you plan, you finish your plan, it doesn't matter, you just put aside, you overlap the other paper, other paper over your plan and you draw up the elevation. You just keep drawing, keep drawing, keep drawing until you have finished all the set of drawing, you draw your elevation, draw your section, draw your plan, right? You just keep the other paper aside. So you present it into using butter paper format during this session. So once the lecture gives you a final green light, say, okay, now it's finalized, your design are good to go. So you just combine all the butter paper and you put it in a white piece of paper here. You see the white piece of paper is actually, um, but let's say it's an A1 block. So this this small butter paper, you just keep drawing, draw your side plan, you just draw your map, draw your whatever symmetric diagram, and then you start, um, you start, I mean, pacing, cut and paste. You cut and paste, you compound it in the floor, and you see or whether it's, it, 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 it fit all everything into the board, and you see the blank space. If, let's say you see the blank space at right hand side and right hand side, whatever the bottom, then you insert it with another diagram or you insert it with another perspective to fill up the blank spot. So the so it is in this method you're able to come up with a very uh, complete presentation of the whole robot. And then you're able to speed up because you can repeat over the butter paper and then uh, you can overlap and draw your plan. So this is what we call five so this skill may be a first year student or second year student, they, I'm not sure whether you know on this method. So don't worry about the changes that actually comment. As long as you draw a lot of paper, you can repeat over it and then you can uh, uh, tap it and then you go on for, uh, photocopy it into watercolor paper or you can put it, uh, uh, printing paper and you can start coloring. So this is how you uh, speed up your work instead of you draw everything and you cannot finish. So in terms of watercolor brush, there are actually a few types, but I normally will use sandal brush and nylon brush. What are the difference? Okay, my recommendation is always a uh, uh, sandal brush because sandal brush is by made by animals' hair, so it can contain the water. The, the the when you draw when you start to color a very big board. Nylon brush intends that you cannot hold the water too long. Meaning, after you color, you need to dip. You need to keep keep uh, adding color and adding uh, uh, water into your drawings, which will make your drawings a bit patchy. But then, in cyber brush, the big big format, I uh, use four and use ten. Um, uh, ten. What about uh, number ten and number twelve brush? It can condense more water, so you can control it slowly. You can control the water, and you can draw in big format in your in your drawings without stop the water to stop halfway. So this is the some of the tips. If you can go and buy, go and buy uh 
saber brush or water color. So the last thing, you must be joking when I ask you to draw 10 A1 water color and finish it by using water and play with water. So a lot of people that may be uh, don't know this skill, if you are using water color, drawing on water color, and then you wait for the water to dry, it's gonna take you gonna give you a very headache. I mean give you a headache and you're not able to dry the dry the water. So another skill uh tips that I'm gonna uh, I'll show you is to is implement a uh, hair dryer. So by using hair dryer actually you can just on it the speed that you want and you can dry within just a few minutes. So so normally I can finish off four and one or six and one just within one night by using hair dryer. So just color it and then you just hair dry it away. You can be very quick and then you can dry up and then you put another layer color on it. So this is how 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 you can speed up by using the color. Yeah. And then one good thing about the color compared to marker and compared to color pencil is that it's faster. Marker may, may, may be not to say it's not good to use, but then if you compare the speed uh, by using water color, marker, marker somehow you, you, you have need to buy a lot of uh, marker because you have only to have a different form, a light form until the dark form. Same as color pencil. Color pencil is the slowest because there's no way that you can you can you can even speed up by using color pencil. So this is another secret. I'm um, move to another uh, secret tools of water making. So this is my third year project. Another third year project. Uh, also using memo. So also water color by using water color. So the, I'm going to show this one. Uh, I'm not going to show or, or, or present on this project. I'm just going to show the skill of making this model. So this is the, the model is uh, located at this uh, bottom right. So the model that I use is actually the, the material that I use is actually sand. I implement perspective in my model, so it looks uh, more solid, and then it looks more plus. And then you see this fine line, white line here. Actually, you can buy white color marker in the market. So the white color marker you can actually draw on plastic. So this combination of marker, polystyrene, and uh, uh, perspective. All this thing, uh, they need you to, to, to glue it actually to use perspect to perspect plus you can use a uh, But when you glue a perspect to other material, you may have issues, especially if you want to glue perspect together with paper. You cannot use just this glue glue or you cannot just use part glue because it's going to take so long to dry and then it may not stick because of plastic. So we need to buy a furniture glue. So furniture glue. That can stick timber or stick uh, wood and they maybe it comes with brown color, different color. It's able to stick all kinds of material. So to do a model, you may need a series of glue. But overall, there's one glue that is my favorite and you can it's the fastest to speed up. Uh it's actually glue gun. So I'll I'll, I'll show you some of the, 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 the picture of glue gun and why it's so fast. And all this actually purely more on glue gun. So to do a fast model, actually you need to do a big scale model. The small small scale model, you have a very hard time sourcing material. And secondly, it's very slow. For example, okay, I'm not sure if you can see my mouse. For example, you do a, a, a small scale model, like surface like this, you need to cut six times. For example, a square box, you need to have six surfaces, you need to cut six times of uh, cardboard to form one piece of of shape or uh, modeling that you uh, I mean the shape that you want. But if you do a big scale model, actually you cut one time. For example, this place I mean, uh, I have this big shape or this thin wall. I just need to cut one time then it's finished. Compared to another, I need to cut out uh, many surfaces to just to, 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 to get uh, to get one one shape out. So um, this is one of the, the skills and the tips you do. You need to do find a material that is uh, the scale is um, the scale is uh, just directly cut one time and then you can finish with that scale. So the secondly is the, the glue 
um, have to use glue gun because glue gun just you dry up just a few seconds. So you cannot use UPU or you use white glue and takes you a few hours or take you a few minutes to dry. So immediately dry up, you just use glue gun, just a few seconds. So this is, I'm not sure whether that you, um, uh, this is how I'll show you some of the presentation. Okay, I'll introduce you. The right hand side actually is Paku. So Paku actually is the, actually the pioneer in lecture in, in, in USM. Why I said the pioneer because he's the oldest and he's the most strict and fierce. Let's say first presentation, you come up with bubble diagram, just showing him bubble diagram in your presentation. I tell you, he's going, He's going to go up to the do your to your butter pepper and then he tear it and throw it on the floor. So this is how Paku do it and did it in my studio. So we cannot never show just bubble diagram or just use mouth to talk in your presentation. So each time of presentation you must show something quite a complete sketches uh for your quick session. So this is the final quick session. So um get selected uh, to present the, um, so I'm not sure on the right hand side if you notice this guy here um, he's a very young uh, handsome guy so maybe the next picture you know who you see okay this is actually he's our deputy team during 15 years ago 4th of July he, so he's one of my lecturers that I, I respect very much and he has taught us very well and uh, in, during my studio time so this uh, your deputy did back in 15 years ago. Okay. So, okay. The another model that I did is, um, also this is a four film model. So it's just a very small project. So I'm going to show you the material is worth polystyrene and I'm used furniture glue to stick polystyrene and perspect. And then all these are actually using furniture glue because I can't stick pepper with perspect, right? No, no, no glue can ever do that. So these are the, 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 the kind of method that I do. So these are the messing model uh, for my fifth year. So I'm just want you to take note, note, take note of all the polystyrene. So now I'm going to share about the secret of polystyrene uh, cutting. So polystyrene is, is very soft and then it's very difficult to cut if your knife is not sharp enough. To cut polystyrene, your knife must be very, very sharp. And then secondly, you need a, oh, this is also polystyrene. So, so this is not my work, this is Ji Hao's work. So uh, I, I will show you Ji Hao's model and my model, um, which I think is small. Uh, uh, I think it's, it's, it's somehow it's presentable. Uh. So this is Ji Hao uh, model. So this is the kind of workmanship that he has and he has uh, show, uh, passed on to me. So I want you to not take note, just not take note of the small detail that he did. So when you do high rise or you do four by four, so the scale and model thickness that you find must be able to fast enough. So every cut, one cut is finished the, the one level. You get what I mean? So if you cut using cardboard to do, it will take years to do because it take you weeks to do to cut out this a lot of surfaces. So you just, just use the find the same one, the thickness that you want, and you just cut one time and then stack it up and then you bring give you the, the, the scale that you want. So to do a polystyrene model, actually what you need is this poly uh, cutter, is a poly string, uh, polystyrene cutter, the blue color. So during my time, there is no such thing as Lazada and Shopee. So I was shocked, actually I want to show you um, the kind of um, tools that I use for polystyrene. Because this tool, you cannot, not, during my time, you can't buy in the market. So you need to modify the tool by yourself. So these blue things come, come about. So uh, one day I told my mom that I'm, I'm cutting polystyrene. So my mom said, you know that polystyrene got a special tool. So I said, what kind of special tool that you mean? So I don't know uh, what do you mean by special tool. I think polystyrene is using this blue thing to cut. He said he, he got, she got a friend that do signages. So when you do, um, I mean, for, for the Chinese, maybe you know, during Chinese New Year, there's always uh, this, uh, lettering things in fat thai or, or, or this fish or this food thing uh, with this product back, 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 back in uh, back many, many years ago. So they, this, all these signage people, they have the tools to cut all this polystyrene. So my mom bring me to her colleague in Sabakas. So in the lobby there, my mom can't, can't take photo of me. For during that time, there's no 
things, no such thing as uh, your camera, your, your phone, your camera. If my, my, you can, my mom can't take the photograph and then show to me. So I need to go to the Sabaka, to the lobby there, and ask my mom, okay, the mom bring up this, this, this whole tools over. So this is the tools. I'm moving this the tools and I just take a look at the tools. And then I come back, okay, this is how the tools look like. And I come back and then I make it myself. So during my second year, I, 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 I able to make myself one of these two on my right hand side. But now we can actually buy in Zada in just 11 ringgit. But I don't know whether this thing, uh, how does it work like, because I, I never buy it before. So last, last time, if you, if you, um, last time I just modify this blue thing into the right hand side thing. I use a timber to cut it out and then I modify the battery because you cannot just use one hand to press the blue thing and then one hand to use polystyrene. If you use that, I'm very sure that your model will be goyang goyang. All the edges will be very, uh, very, very, uh, what makes you very bad because your one hand goyang, my one hand cutting with polystyrene. So you need to have a little tools like the right hand side is, you can buy it in Lazada, it's just 11 ringgit. So these two, you're able to you just freeze the, freeze the polystyrene there, and then you can use both hand to cut your polystyrene window. So this is a special tool that you need if you're using polystyrene. So, dual model is always the time versus cost. What do you mean time versus cost? Time is that if you spend month, if you want to save time, you have to spend a lot on material because you're going to do a big scale model. You're going to cut it very fast and there will be, uh, I mean, there will be a lot of wastage and they will need to buy more materials. But then if you do a cost saving model, you do a small scale model, but then it takes time for you to cut because you need a special tool like to, to, to hold it and then to cut it up. So I always do a big model so that I'm able to finish on time. Now. Same as you draw a color manual board. If you use, um, if you don't use spot green and you don't use hair dryer, I'm pretty sure that you may not able to meet your, 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 your time if you, if you are rushing it. So this is another model of G house work. He is also use gun and then use a big scale. All these models are big scale so that it's easy to cut. So I'm going to show you another series of model that G house did. So this is the fifth year project by Ji Hao is using Manual. So you see the way of they do the presentation and then the coloring of the elevation and the perspective. So yeah, if you can do a night scene, then you color the night scene and the day scene. Ji Hao is a person that's very artistic. So you can see the way that color the trees, the color background, everything, you use a very um, sketchy kind of coloring methods. Oh, there's nothing no right and wrong as long as it looks presentable in your, in your presentation part. So this is G House model. So you please uh can observe the small detail that you use. The base that for the model we use a very thick base and then we stick between the side plan and then we stick over it. And then uh to to do up this model, every floor actually we we we, we cut it out and then uh Floor by floor is using one polystyrene thickness and then just a simple layer of it. So the networking shape, you can reduce the cutting numbers of cutting, but with a very nice workmanship uh, of the model. So all these are done by glue gun. So these are some of the interior spaces. He used also use perspex, and then for interior, actually for to represent some ID works, it's better that you print out color. To stick on the texture, so to, to, to represent as a texture. So it's more, most of the ID, if you're going to show ID in your, in your presentation. So this is one way to print in color and then you stick it over, over the big, uh, over, over your, your board and then you sit, you, you, you create the texture of it. So this is some of the interior, uh, photo shoot and the kind of material that you use on my right hand side. You can see if you are some people that we are asked to use, um, to do some, um, M&E services. So these are some of the used M&E services, 3D model as, uh, some of, um, his model presentation by showing, uh, the fresh air intact, place the, the, all the ducting, and then you see the wall, you stick some, uh, very tiny, 
uh, sticker, color sticker over it to create uh, this, uh, uh, the texture on the wall and then print pepper and then stick over it. So these are some methods that we can, we all can, can, can consider. So uh, another impressive model that uh, Jihao did is also it do a night scene model. So how to do that night scene model actually is, 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 is just to put the light inside your model. Basically, it's just meaning like that. But then you uh, please observe the the kind of uh, size that he did. So he actually all the model that he do is big scale, uh, able to cater for hamster like uh, everyone. So all these things he cut out and then um, with a very um, minimal cutting. So all the fin that he use is actually the thickness of one modeling board or one modeling uh, panel. So uh, it's it, it definitely faster, uh, fast in, in the way that he able to finish the drawing board and able to finish the 3D model. I believe this only 3D model is just optional. It's not really required by lecture. It's all optional um, extra effort that you do for your model, for your submission. So all this extra effort that you do, actually one day it will become your own portfolio for job interview, for your own record. It's actually benefits to you all. Even though sometimes the lecturer may not ask you to do a model, if they are fast enough and you're skillful enough, actually you can do extra hard work and then this can become the portfolio for your own. So the left hand side is also a night scene. So this method, if you can see, um, I want you all observe the white color thing that he, that he do. Actually, this is gray. So some of the drawing that you combine using watercolor, this all clearly watercolor. Watercolor with the right amount of, uh, 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 uh I mean the cream and uh, also the water, actually it can serve like a marker. You use the brush, the, the thin, the flat brush, actually it can form like a marker, it can use like a marker. And then the combination, combine white spray over it to create this 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 highlight over it or uh, over the drawings. So these are some of the drawings that I will show. Okay, then this is my model for my fifth year. So fifth year, I always wanted maybe something I shared before. Fifth year, I always wanted to do a model that um very unique and no one has done before. I, I mean, no one I I I never seen before. So I come up with this idea that maybe everyone is having this sectional drawing, sectional perspective. My well, my as well. Maybe I want to do something uh uh something uh crazy or something that I uh, want to challenge myself before I graduate. So this last model that I do for myself during fifth year is actually a sectional model, meaning I use the perspective as the hinges and then I create, I, I plan it in a way that the two models actually can, can swing. So during the presentation, I actually can swing the model out and then I can close it. So this is how it looks like during my fifth year presentation. And uh, the next to finish it, um, the last model. This is the last model before I graduate. Yeah. So, okay, come to my third year. Okay, come to other back to manual drawings. So this manual drawings, this guy is called Yi Chao. So Yi Chao is one of my senior in my batch. I mean, not my batch. A uh, year, uh, one year older than me. So I always amazed by his manual work and then his computer work. I didn't show his computer work because. Today is just about manual. Uh. So his computer work rendering is amazing. His manual also amazing. So I always follow his work with any submission. So each how is also using purely on uh, watercolor. So if you observe each how work, his trees and he's always finished with very, very nice struck as a termination. So if you can see the bottom of the tree or bottom of the, the other board, this is what I always like to copy. Uh. So he always finished with very nice struck. And then a very amazing trees. So this is manual work. Uh, result also. This is also about maybe six a one uh, in, in in the actual scale. So how he draw the side plan and he put all the specific perspective at the blank, uh, blank space. Arranging in the such a way is a very nice graphic. And then his artwork is amazing. It's very fine. His line work is very fine. So if you, if you see his this is for the um his presentation board. He always has this uh, shrub. Uh, I'm not sure whether you can you can see like see or not. This shrub on the bottom of the trees here. Yeah? 
it, it, in, in actual presentation, it always looks nice. So I, I put a zoom in one for you to see. So he's hatching monopon and then finish with shrub and then finish with leaves. All these are small details, but then it, it enhanced the, the presentation board. Yeah. So this is how work and during third year. So another manual work that I'm sure is Asli one during his fifth year, fifth year, fifth year project. So Asli always present or, uh, manually decor or, 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 or decorate his title box. So you can see his title box, he designed the title box. Um, and then this is his, uh, I think fourth year, sorry, fourth year project. So this is fourth year, uh, manual rendering. Uh, then this is asking me fifth year. So his fifth year is using color pencil. So, and then with the blue color, you will see the blue is actually a spray. If you don't know, not sure that, that actually you can buy a spray and then you can spray over the drawing as a texture to your, to the sky. Or actually some people, they always they call it as a title box, you know, title box. They buy a spray and then they cut it, the shape, and then they just spray over it instead of color and color the title box. So this is Asli uh, color pencil and manual rendering. So this is his fifth year. And then you can observe the, the, the fonts that he do. The, the label font annotation, rare annotation is very, very nice font. And then this is what a uh, real nice description or nice uh, um, uh, explanation of your drawings. So if you draw perspective from one point point perspective or two point perspective, you may not able to capture or present your drawings um, clearly. But by sectional perspective, actually you can kill two birds in one stone, uh, meaning you can show your construction knowledge skill. And then secondly, you can able to show all your flaw, your intent you want to do inside your design. Meaning to say it relate one space to another one space to another, and then at the same time, it shows you the the, the, the construction uh, detail. So this can be applied to all of you for, from first year to third year. It doesn't matter. I mean, um, I mean, it, it, the, the, the how good that you are in your construction drawing because you're still in first degree. Um, in second degree, actually, we need to draw in all the services, your piping, ecosystem, uh, the kind of material, your specification, uh, it's part of the research and second sem of fifth year requirements by the MAGA. So it, next time when you do your, your, your fifth year, this is what we, I mean, the, the MAGA expect. So you are really, if, if you, if you are not good at coloring, some people, they are not, they are good at drawing, but they are not good at coloring. Once they color, they spoil the whole board. We have friends like that. So what I can recommend you, you just can follow uh, this method, you just draw a very nice hatching over your drawing. Like this one, you can draw a very nice hatching. You see how Asli do the rendering of the light. He do it so fine in the, and then he draw all the activities inside. Even you see the display of this art and culture, he even draw every, uh, every panel of the display inside the ID. And then all the display inside the exhibition center. And then he used shadow to catch it nicely. And then use a very light color pencil over it. So if you cannot color, doesn't matter. If you just use a very nice line work and then use a very light color pencil over it, your presentation will look perfectly great. So these are Asli work. And then the next one I'm going to show is a senior, a pioneer senior. I've only met him in my first year because the lecturer asked him to conduct uh, watercolor class to all the students in first year. So I remember he came in when he is fifth year, so he come in the class and teach us how to do watercoloring. So this is what is called uh he's called Angkok Man. So I always repeat I always refer to his uh, presentation board. So this is how he color the using watercolor to color the plant. It's very very light color and very bright color. So the skill to do this is really your need to change your water very often meaning one color after another, if the, the water start the, to, I mean, dirty, the then you just replace it with a new water and you start coloring it. And then you put shadow on your plant so that you see the black color shadow. It gives you a certain depth and certainly put a texture inside all your stores. Meaning the water, you put the texture water 
and all the tiles you texture it and then you use the nice graphic and all the trees you put shadow some are uh, just another tips the shadow if you don't want to use watercolor is fine you just buy a green marker green dark marker color as the shadow for trees is the the workmanship will be better and then you can get the same effect so this is on top man's uh manual work and this is the exometric view so for you the the things that bring up the um, 3d and the beauty of it actually is shadow if you can drop a very nice shadow on, on your manual actually your, your perspective will look very great so exonometric view is uh, one of the best graphic to show your design and uh, perspective don't go too hard on three point perspective four points perspective actually by drawing two point and one point perspective and with a good skill on exometric, exometric view it will work very very fine and then it's easy to easier to draw and then you still um it'll be faster to draw so these are some of the elevation view how he render the shadow if you can see clearly he used a dark, darker tone to render the shadow and draw it and then a lighter tone of uh trees or the background as a background and then um uh color 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 methods and then this is another bird eye view and killer shot i'll call it a killer shot by 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 Uncle Meng. so he always render a bird uh flying here and some somewhere and then uh the kind of uh tone that he used i'm not sure i'm not saying the design is perfectly nice but then the the skill that he gives the texture into the drawing when you do manual you need some kind of texture like stone or you give a little bit of texture etching uh then you can come up with a very nice presentation so these are trees he are always amazed by the trees how can you draw the trees that everyone like would be amazed by the trees so he's <laughs> uncle man's work and this uh another perspective by uncle man's and uh exonometric view and uh watercolor skill and more perspective night scene by him so this is uh um another perspective so some color watercolor there is a very special unique thing is that you don't have to use many colors to do so you want it is different from color pencil and marker uh, marker and color pencil you want to go darker you buy another tone watercolor doesn't work that way it doesn't mean that green color you want it to be darker you add dark green you add black color in watercolor only that for example to get a green color like this he only used dark green and blue color so if you want a darker tone you just mix with ultramarine blue and you get another tone and then i i will hair dry it dry it and i immediately put in another darker tone and then i will hair dry it hair dry it and then speed up the, 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 the process of drying so this is how how they come up to uh with a tone and then this brown color so you just add blue color on it blue color blue color to make the thing darker so the shadow actually um using actually makes blue color and and and, and brown color to form up the light gray color so it doesn't take black and white to become gray it's really take brown and blue to become gray color so this is a special i mean the unique part of our uh, color so this is another artwork by ji hao so he, he, he his work is always artistic uh. so um so he lo lo looking at his presentation board is looking like in a piece of art so this is ji hao's work that he colored the tree the way that he colored the sky and he, he colored the presentation board he just highlights some part and then he's um very nicely done and then uh, very artistic work so this is one way of uh, doing the presentation so this is another uh guy is called um oh, ang Jing Yao. so this ang Jing Yao and ang tok meng's work they are actually they are set from the same sifu master both of them actually from different batch but then they are from the same i think watercolor sifu lah. so they are both of them the color thing and the skill is look exactly the same so this is ang Jing Yao's work so uh during fifth year you need to do uh this kind of scale maybe of three to five acre project so you start to draw all this into a bucket paper and then you start to do white print on it so this is how it come about and then the wordings you actually can print in the sticker if you if you cannot finish your drawing on time you actually don't need to draw it you just print on the sticker and then you 
photostate it the sticker and then you cut it and then paste it on your labeling as a labeling so this is how a presentation board with a sticker and then with a, a white green methods and a watercolor so this elevation you just don't have to put very complex dimension just a, a, a presentation drawing and section uh, this you can maybe you have another other choice uh, i mean another method to do but you will color very light yellow or orange over it so that we should we know that the section cut through which are the area that you cut through so these are the, the methods and this is the sectional perspective again that you show your building services and then your perspective and your intent uh in your in your in your uh in your fifth year thesis uh. so these are some of his work very same as the what uh previous that i mentioned uh, the color also the same the the methods of the same with the on top man so both these are from the same c floor so uh this is the end uh for my session on um, how actually people can speed up how is the skill to move back more um what you need to do actually is to use a quite brain method and if you are not as good as asli asli is immediately he will draw on the final board he is, is so unique he's so good at this manual skill but normally we we we, we just do our other letter and then we will just draw whatever we want first and then in the final days when lecture give us the green light okay you can full swing full print and then from the butter paper we just repeat whatever the mistake and a man by mistake put it on the white paper and then post that it and then we can become our final board and then start the color so that is how you, you the process of uh using manual technique is different from computer so i think that's all from me today and uh, hopefully that you learn some uh for the first year student especially it's more senior at the moment that you can you can refer to so you can get some ideas how to do a model and do manual technique like so called yeah 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 done my session <laughs> okay thank you very much mervin uh, so i would like to uh open this uh, session to allow uh, students or any uh, members of the audience to ask questions to mervin <clears throat> it's a q a session uh we will have around 10 minutes before we end this entire talk uh, I think I can resonate or relate to your case. Yeah? I mean, which, 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 uh, in your batch, we, you have uh, this guy named Azli. Uh, I think I met him uh, last year. Usually, in our, <laughs> it's usual for us to have like one or two persons that we look up to right, in the yeah. batch so that we can like compete with them. So we always have this like an expression of um, uh, of being kiasu uh, so to... <laughs> To, to you know just spark the competitiveness between uh, all of the members in the studio so i think uh, it's a good uh, positive uh, and healthy environment so it's not to like bring down your friends or whatever it's just to you know elevate yourself or your capability in producing certain things so this is not a question actually it's just a statement that i think yeah. we can relate to um just uh, perhaps my question would be like uh, in the case of of uh, the current situation, uh, given that we all are confined or we are all are limited, uh, constrained within uh, students are being at home. Uh, as you know that uh, all of those beautiful works that you have just shown to us, uh, those works are produced in the studio environment, which is a conducive uh, or the most perfect environment uh, right. for us to produce such work. So now students are at home and then uh, do you have any advice to them, like uh, how to produce uh, such good quality manual works? Um, um, last time I used to learn from YouTube, especially on, let's say, the, the method to color, say how to combine. If you have art background, maybe it's easier for you to relate, especially uh, you have crayon background or you have, you know, like I me, mean, I personally, I, I, I have art background during my secondary or primary school. So I roughly know the fundamental of how to draw a one point or two point perspective and also uh, how to mix the color, especially mixture of color is uh, some a need a little bit of skill. Um, so one way to actually to know how to 
draw one point perspective, two point perspective, or coloring, actually just to search YouTube, one, one, one of the ways to search YouTube. And then is unless unless the lecturer is come here and then willing to show you the video. I mean some video how you start your, your object perspective line. It, it, it will be very difficult to just by using verbally advice uh, to how you how you do the hatching, um how you do all these manual work to enhance your work, right? So I I'm just personally sharing during my time I look at all this spot. I every submission I'll have this soft copy of this all this scene. So when I draw perspective, when I want to start to draw trees, I will look for the every detail that they have. How come their their trees are all very nicely done? What is the the small small detail that they have? Maybe the hatching, maybe the kind of stroke to terminate the graphic. Uh, I will imitate it. I will copy it and I try to practice it during my free time or even every every during my free time. I will just keep practicing it until it looks very similar. And I will just, I mean, meaning I success successfully learn the skill. And secondly, is the nano skill, the color about the coloring skill. Actually, when once Asli came in, right, second year, actually all of us are very, very far apart from him. Definitely is he's another level because if we are just 21, like he's like 28, 29. So the moment that we think of research how to design a room, he already understands what dimension of all the rooms so he's definitely one step faster than us and he's so good at this manual work and while we are just still exploring how to how to render how to practice there's no shortcut you have to put more effort during your free time to just draw to just manually practice it so it's my my only advice uh. just keep practicing your coloring your 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 sketching so no, no, that, that, that is my only advice. Keep practicing, and then uh, if you need advice from me, how to color, what, how to, you can text me on, uh, I mean, what media or, or what kind of, uh, um, maybe in modeling you can ask me what kind of material that you use to buy, uh, and then I, I only can set, I only can show you physically how to color. If you are here, I can I can conduct a watercolor class. I don't mind to conduct a class for you all. Uh, to, how to mix all this, how to get the color that I showed you just now on the slide. Actually, I just practice. I also don't know. Actually, at first I looked at that. I don't know how to com come with that color. For example, the, the color of the trees, the plant, right? I keep exploring. I just during my my holiday, during school holiday, I just I just take all the watercolor, right? I just mix this color and that color mixed together and then I try to practice it. Hey, then I found a great, then I, I, I suddenly I got a thing that, oh, actually, when blue color you mix with brown color, put a right amount of water color, actually it becomes gray. And then this gray is very suitable to cast a shadow. And then this is some of the things that I managed to explore. Yeah, all that. Right. Thank you. That's great. Uh, so that means that there are a lot of uh, trial and error in the process. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. So I think it's okay if you think if you encounter at some point in your works eh, that you would not achieve a certain uh, certain results. So I think this is the process. Lah. Also, there is a question here in the chat box, Mervin, uh, regarding on all the killer perspective drawings. How do you imagine yeah. and draw the perspective or the building? Oh. All the detailing and correct scale? Uh, actually, when you start to design a project, I believe it, the process itself is always come with the imagination meaning when you draw the floor plan right you already start to imagine the space that you want to uh, the interesting spaces then you start looking at what if i take the view from here it would be nicer or not what should i take the view from the other side so all these actually try and error first year and second year i'm not able to, to, to do it that well only when when slowly come to third year i have some basic on the visualization how perspective, which angle to take, it will be more impressive. So it, it always come with, uh, I cannot tell you how to imagine the perspective that I take. But then when you go along um, your design, you know that you want to show this area as one of the area to show. Then you start to take uh, the angle like photography like that. So some photographer, they can take very nice angle. So, so it's all by imagination that uh, which you think is a killer shot. Uh, 
you can present the work and then it's a killer shot, the angle that you take. Yeah. Great. Okay, there's another question there. If you can read in the, in the chat box uh, from Amma. Uh, the tricks or rule of thumbs regarding choosing the color palette. Say, say, sorry, say, say, say again. Uh, 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 tricks, uh, rule of thumbs in choosing the color. Oh, choosing color. Oh, actually choosing color, I always refer to my seniors work actually. I, I don't I, I don't really invent a new style of presentation. So I have all these copy, soft copy of my seniors. And then I try to if the if you think the, the color look presentable and nice and clean, right? I will try to just follow back and then I will not invent a new one unless unless I, I wanted to laugh. unless I really wanted to uh, get rid of this uh, reference from my seniors and try to invent my own color scheme, then I'll do that like for my result. The blue color scheme is uh, the one that I, I, I started um, the new kind of color scheme. But other, other than that, you see my four pen color, actually I refer to my top uh, color scheme, and then the elevation and the trees are for long, uh, tea house presentation, the, the kind of uh, the trees presentation, how to draw, actually I follow his scheme. So, so more or less, I don't invent my own. I just refer. Yeah, I refer. And, all right. All right. So, uh, any other uh, questions from the audience? Uh, okay. Well, would you like to wrap up, or is there anything else that you want to share, Mervin? Uh, no. No, okay. So, um, hopefully, <laughs> uh, give some step, sample or reference, and uh, maybe I, I can pass this soft copy. I mean, all the original board, maybe pass to someone to turn out whatever to upload. So, is maybe when you come up to manual, when you want to source for uh, color scheme, is one how, how, how you do this, um, how to call presentation board, you got a reference to refer. Uh, I mean, these are some some guideline to, to refer. I mean, maybe there are better one in the in outside, but I don't know. But this is the one that I got uh in my school. So hopefully, it will help a little bit on uh, how to do a uh, presentation work. Yeah, that would be great. Um, in fact, there is one request from a student asking whether you would uh, share your slides also. Yeah, uh, would you allow that? Uh, I think that would yeah. be great also, right? Can can but, but I will show the uh, the slide is not is nothing compared to the board. I'll give you the original yeah. board because I the slide I already how to say I already I already take some of it. I really should give all. Uh, I mean put inside my slide. Yeah. Okay. Can? Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Even better. Even better. So thank you very much, Mervin, and uh, thank yeah. you everyone for uh, attending and listening to the talks by Mervin. Uh, he. Uh, we would like to uh, no, uh, appreciate, uh, would like to thank you for uh, spilling out all the secret recipe. So it's no longer secret now. So all the students can actually emulate and uh, follow what has been shown here. And then we would welcome you to actually explore uh, your own or your own style of uh, producing uh, quality works. So I would, with that, I would like to end this uh, wrap this session. So. Uh, on behalf of the Department of Architecture in Mass, uh, I would like to thank you and uh, goodbye. Yeah, thank you. Bye.